Hashimoto Daiki is the first man to win back-to-back all-around championships since the GOAT, Kohei Uchimura. Ilya Kovtun came in with the silver medal, and he is the first Ukrainian man to win two all-around medals at the World Gymnastics Championships. And the United States' Fred Richard won bronze, and he is the first man to win an all-around medal since 2010 when John Horton did it. I'm Kinsley, and I'm the host of Neutral Deductions, and we're going to be talking about everything that happened in the men's all-around final at the World Gymnastics Championships here in Antwerp. This is the Neutral Deductions Podcast, men's gymnastic news, coverage, and analysis. 2023 World Championships coverage from Antwerp, Belgium, hosted by Kinsley Beal. Setting the stage, Hashimoto Daiki was not supposed to be in this competition. So in qualifications, he was two per country out by Chiba Kenta and Kai Kazuma. Now the team had apparently decided beforehand, according to one of the coaches, that if Hashimoto was two per country, he was still going to be in the all around. Since Chiba Kenta was number one ranked going in, he was allowed to still compete in the all around final and Kai Kazuma had to sit on the sidelines. There were several other people who pulled out of this final. Artem Dolgopiat withdrew. He should have been replaced by the first alternate, which was Nestor Abad, but Abad didn't choose to go into the all-around competition, and instead it went to his teammate, Tiano Diallo. Then Arthur Dovtian withdrew, and he was replaced by the third reserve, Luca van den Kipos, of the home team, Belgium. Ademisil withdrew and then was finally replaced by the alternate Andre Muntian, and then Andre Muntian withdrew and was replaced by Kabibulu Ergashev of Uzbekistan. And then there was this other situation that happened with the Italians where Lorenzo Casali withdrew and then he ended up giving the spot to his teammate who was also two per country and so Mario Macchiati got to compete in the all-around final along with Human Abedini. So it was sort of an unexpected final in terms of who was competing but it was exciting nonetheless. Coming in, there was a lot of buzz about China Sunway, and Sunway is a gymnast that has captured the heart of many of the gymnastics fans, and he has placed fourth twice in the World Championships and Olympic Games, and then fifth one time, so two fourths and a fifth, three total. And we really feel like he's more or less the alley raceman of men's gymnastics. Everyone loves him. We love his gymnastics. But he can never seem to like put it together and actually be able to get on the podium and just seems to be a little bit shy. So we'll talk about what happened with him today. One of the other gymnasts that we were really excited about to see was Ilya Kovtun of Ukraine, but he did not have a great qualifying and he was down rotating in the third group, meaning that he was starting on silver rings and ending on pommel horse. And that's not ever a place that any gymnast really wants to be. You never really want to end your, end your rotation on pommel horse because it's one of the events that is most likely to have an athlete fall. Of course, when you're tired, you have to have the mental stamina to stay on as well. And that is sort of what we ended up seeing is that a lot of the gymnasts who were hitting pommel horse at the end, they weren't able to stay on and it did affect their placement ultimately. Now let's get into the competition. So the very first routine of the very first rotation was Fred Richard of the USA on floor exercise. And Fred went out and he opened so well. And as a rookie at the world championships, you never really know, are they going to be able to handle the pressure? And he went out and he did his job. Then the two British athletes came up and honestly, they were hopping all over the place. And Jake was able, Jake Jarman was able to score relatively well because he has so much difficulty. We didn't end up seeing compete his eponymous skill, which he got named after him at the Paris World Cup, but he did open with a triple double. One of his passes, it really looked like he went out of bounds. And many people online have also been talking about, yes, he went out of bounds. There's a screenshot and the judges never raised the out of bounds flag. So I'm not really sure why he wasn't awarded a neutral deduction for going out of bounds, but ultimately he did end up with a relatively competitive score after the first rotation. Hashimoto Daiki really had a lot of us worried going in. This was not a great floor routine for him. He was hopping all over the place. There were a couple landings where his chest was low down to his knees where they can take up to a half a point deduction. And we were like, oh my goodness, he has got a big hole that he has got to climb out of. And that ended up being true because he ended up being in 17th place after the first rotation. Uh, Before we get to the results after the first rotation, I do want to focus on a couple of other highlights. So for me, Casimir Schmidt of the Netherlands, his vault was just oh so good. He ended up hitting the Dragulescu. There was lots of height, lots of power, good distance, and a strong landing as well. So that was a great start to his competition. And then Sunway's rings was 
a very solid set for him. And as we know, China is typically very strong on rings. And so this was a great place for him to start and get going with his competition. So following the first rotation, Fred Richard was in first with a 14.633, followed by Ahmed Onder, Jake Jarman, Milad Karimi, Casimir Schmidt, and Sun Wei. And as I mentioned earlier, Hashimoto Daiki was all the way down in 17th position. Heading to rotation two, the top group is going to pommel horse. So everyone's sort of holding their breath, waiting to see what's going to happen. And then the two athletes that we also expected to be in the top, Sunway and Ilya Kofton, were rotating from still rings to vault. So Sunway went up very early on vault, and he nearly decided that he was going to kiss the ground at the end of his vault. It was terrifying, and he didn't end up putting his hand down, but needless to say, the landing was not great and did not add a super great score to his strong still rings routine from the first rotation. Chiba Kenta of Japan, who was first coming into the all-around final, his pommel horse was incredible. He scored a 14-8, knocked it out of the park. We were like, Chiba Kenta is about to become the world all-around champion. So now it's time for Fred Richard to go. And Fred has struggled a couple times on pommel horse throughout this competition. So in the team final, he didn't get credit for his opening scissor to handstand. And then he also had a skill called an Urzica that was downgraded. So instead of pushing up into the handstand, which means that you wouldn't actually get credit for it, he just sort of like overcooked it and had a little bit too much power. And he ended up stepping down from the pommel down to the horse, which is a three tenths deduction. But it's better than doing the slow push up because if they decide to not credit the skill, well, one, you don't get credit for the skill and two, you don't get credit for the element group. So it is a massive hit. It's much better to overcook it, take the three step down and continue on with your routine, which is exactly what he did. I believe his Urzica still did get downgraded. His D score was a little bit lower than we have seen the rest of the year. And I asked him about this after the meet, you know, like, hey, this got downgraded at nationals. You've had a couple of struggles here with it. What's going on? Are you going to take it out of your routine? Are you going to replace it? And he said, you know what? In training, it looks really good. My coaches assure me it's meeting, you know, all of the qualifications. And I just have to mentally prepare to do that skill better in competition. So I thought that that was an interesting idea because personally, if it was me, I would just take that skill out and just not worry about it from any, any further. Neutral Deductions recently launched this year and is entirely funded by listener contributions. If you'd like to support the show and help promote men's gymnastics, Kindly consider making a donation through the PayPal link provided in the show notes. All donations are greatly appreciated. Thank you. Hashimoto Daiki comes up on Pommel Horse. He does a very good routine. And after his routine, he jumped 10 spots from 17th to 7th. So the results were Chiba Kenta of Japan in first with a 28.766, followed by Sunway of China with a 28.432. Diego Suarez got a 28.366. Fred Richard was in third, also tied with a 28.366. Florian Langenegger of Switzerland was in fifth with a 28.099, followed by Jake Jarman of Great Britain with a 27.933. And in seventh was Hashimoto Daiki with a 27.832. Now, I do want to take a moment here and talk about Diego Suarez of Brazil. So this is a common thing that happens with many of the Brazilian athletes, is they end up qualifying in the last group or the second to last group, and they end up going, you know, typically like vault and then parallels and bar, parallel bars and then high bar, where they're typically very strong. And they end up being really high up in the standings and everyone's like, oh my gosh, a Brazilian gymnast is going to do that. I'm like, yeah, but they haven't gotten to floor and they haven't gotten to pommel horse and so on. And so that's exactly what happened here. So it, through the first three rotations, Diego Suarez was very high up and it, it wasn't going to last because he had some weaker events coming along. But I do just want to give him a shout out because he did have a really good day and put up really good routines. And um, in the last rotation, he stuck his dismount on still rings and it was beautiful and wonderful. And I just congratulations to him on having a great performance today. Heading into the third rotation, the top group was going to still rings and none of these athletes are actually particularly strong on still rings. It's just sort of an event that they have to get through. 
Interestingly, Hashimoto Daiki had a very good score here and still rings is by far the weakest event in his program, but he got a 14 on it, which was really key to help him continue to move up the standings. We had Asher Hong of the Americans. He was over on vault and I was really hoping that this was going to be a place where he could jump up the standings a little bit. He had certainly had struggles. He started on pommel horse. He started with a fall. He went okay through still rings. And I was like, okay, he's going to go to vault. He's got this huge difficulty. One of two athletes in the entire competition who has a 6-0 vault. A 6-0 difficulty start value on vault. And he goes to do his Rise Guang. And it's like... I don't know if any of you have seen that that um, clip of Shay who they add, you know, the gif of Shay at the end of people when they sort of fall forward. And that's sort of exactly <laughs> what Asher did on vault when he landed was just sort of, you know, danced and reached for the ground. And it just it wasn't his day, which is so unfortunate because Asher is a spectacular athlete with so much potential. And he placed within the top five or six last year and certainly had the capability to be back up there. But It just happens sometimes to athletes where for whatever reason, whether it's lack of sleep or jet lag or training or tiredness, or some days you're just off. And I really felt for him because I know that he really could have been up in that top group and fighting for a place on the podium as well. The third group of athletes, the one that had started on still rings, they're now over at parallel bars and Cofton did one of his key fabulous routines went over 15 may have been the only one to go over 15 on parallel bars I would definitely have to double check that but that is when he really started to jump up the standings and then Sunway also did quite a good routine on parallel bars and then was able to stay in sort of that top bubble so following three rotations it was Sunway, Ilya Kofton, Chiba Kenta, Diego Suarez of Brazil, Fred Richard, and Hashimoto Daiki in sixth. The fourth rotation is where things really started to change. So rotation four is when everyone would have gone through vault. And I talk about this a lot. It's really hard to know what the standings are in any men's event until they go through vault because vault scoring is typically so high and the E scores are so high that you just really can't compare athlete to athlete until everyone has gone through vault. There were so many athletes that stuck in this rotation. It was incredible. So Daiki stuck his cause double, which is a round of entry with three twists. I mean, stuck it cold and it was like, okay, Hashimoto's back. He might still be in this. Fred did a cause one and a half, which is a different vault than he has been trying to do recently. So he was doing cause one and a halves through the early part of the year, switched to handspring double front, then tried Dragulescu and then was like, nope, I'm going back to the cause one and a half. It was like he was at an NCAA NCAA meet, stuck it cold. It was fantastic. But I have to say the best vault of the rotation, Jake Jarman, by far, Yanakura, round off entry on, three and a half rotations off, stuck it cold. And when he stuck it, his jaw literally dropped. It was, it was a work of art. I hope that is gift for years and years and years to come. It was something spectacular to be able to watch in person. Aside from Vault, Sunway and Ilya Kofton were over on high bar. And so Sunway's routine was pretty good. It scored over 15. He was a little bit short on some of his Takamoto elements, which are the elements that stoop under the bar, but he was able to catch his Casina and the Takachev. So he does layout Takachev um, to straddle Takachev to pike Takachev. And for those of you who don't know, there is a limit on how many Takachev style elements that you can do in one routine. You can do a max of three, but the only way you can do three is if at least two of them are connected. Otherwise you have a max of two. He was a little bit wacky on his Takimoto skill with a full turn. I'm not really sure what happened, but he was really, really late into the dismount and ended up needing to take a step back. But he ended up scoring a 14.233, which is a great score on high bar. And that certainly kept him in the mix. And then we had Ilya Kofton on high bar and he started with a casino and then had was really good through his Dikachev series. Um... His Takimoto skills were also a little bit late, which is very common in men's gymnastics in a place where they do get a lot of deductions. He did a double layout, double, double layout, and he ended up having a step step back and he also scored over 14. And then he was able to stay ahead of both Fred Richard and Chiba Kenta with those scores. So we had back to vault, 
Chiba Kent is about to go. Remember, Chiba had been one of the top athletes going into this and he goes to do his fault and he, I don't know how he kept this on his feet. It was truly miraculous <laughs> and it he must do breast and legs is all I can figure out. And for those of you who don't know, Ali Raisman's coach was named Brestian and he had this routine that he would have his athletes do to keep their legs strong and they could withstand basically any landing that was ever thrown at them. And that's exactly what Chiba Kenta did is he managed to stay on his feet, but he stumbled back several times. So this plummeted him down the standings just a little bit. So following three, it was Sunway, Hashimoto Daiki, Ili Kovtan, Fred Richard, Jake Jarman, and Chiba Kenta in sixth. So at this point, we're pretty sure that these are gonna be the athletes who are in the running to actually be on the podium. Neutral Deductions is your exclusive gymnastics news platform focused entirely on men's gymnastics. To show your support, please subscribe to Neutral Deductions' YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram. Heading to rotation five, the top group is moving on to parallel bars, and that number three group that had Sunway and Ilya Kofton is moving to floor. So parallel bars was really irritating <laughs> because... I think we think it was due to camera and TV timing, but they were making the athletes wait forever. And if you remember what I talked about in qualifications, they also had to wait forever, but that was because the parallel bars were set up wrong and athletes got cold and they weren't able to perform to their best. So I was really nervous because this is the top group of athletes who should be able to, you know, get on the bar, perform to their best and move on. But instead they're waiting. I'm, I'm talking like five to 10 minute waits. And if you're an athlete who's trying to stay warm, that can of course be incredibly difficult. But Fred Richard, he went up, he hit a pretty good set. There was one skill that was a little bit off. I'm not recalling exactly which skill it was, but you know, he managed to stay on and did a great dismount and was able to stay in the running. Daiki Hashimoto, he also had a really long wait. And I was able to talk to him after the competition in the media zone. And I said, you know, what was going through your mind? And he, he was so funny. He said, you know, honestly, for me, it was just a rest. And it was really nice to have a moment to just rest. And I didn't think about the pause and getting irritated or frustrated. I just rested. And I thought that was a really good attitude to have. At this point, Sunway and Ilya Kovtan are struggling on floor. Um, not terrible struggles, but not the best routines they could have done. I believe Jake Jarman had a fall on parallel bars at this point. So that's going to take him more or less out of the running. And then one of the athletes who wasn't really in the running, but I feel like is worth a mention at this point is Ahmed Ander. So Ahmed Ander of Turkey is a world medalist. He's an Olympian and he's on pummel horse at this point and he has one fall and then he gets right back up. He has another fall. He goes to do the dismount. He can't get up into the dismount. He ends up having to put his foot back down on the pommel horse and he comes off. He's just looking at his coach. The Israeli delegation is coming up so they can get ready to go on pommel horse. And the Turkish coach is like, no, 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 get off the stand. So he wanted Ahmed Ander to redo his dismount, which, you know, at that point, I'm not really sure why you would have an athlete redo their dismount because they've just fallen three times on pommel horse and they're clearly not in the running for a medal. And, you know, at what point does that matter? But Regardless, that's what they decided to do. And so that was just sort of a funny exchange of having to get an athlete off the podium so that the other athlete could actually finish and get credit for their dismount. The other fall that was really interesting was Asher Hong. And he was, man, he was just really having a hard day out there today. And it was a fall kind of like a la Sam McCulloch in 2013, where Sam was going through the all around final. He was ending on high bar. He was in a middle position and he just sort of like bent his arms and ended up collapsing on top of the high bar. And that's exactly what happened to Asher Hong. So I know that this will be a competition that he'll want to learn from and hopefully do better from in the future. But it was just sort of reminiscent of Sam and it sort of gave those of us on press row a little bit of 
a flashback to that moment 10 years ago in Antwerp, Belgium as well. Following the fifth rotation, Hashimoto Daiki's in the lead with a 71.632, followed by Fred Richard with a 71.032, followed by Chiba Kenta with a 70.831, Ilya Kovtun's in fourth, in fifth is Sun Wei, and in sixth is Jake Jarman. Now I'm dubbing the sixth rotation the rotation of falls. So Fred falls on high bar, Sun Wei falls on pummel horse, I think twice, Chiba Kenta fell on high bar, and Jake Jarman fell on high bar. Like it was not a clean rotation. So when Fred falls on high bar, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, he's going to end up off of the podium. Like that's it. And then Sun Wei fell and everyone's heart was broken because he has just been the bridesmaid so many times and everyone was hoping that he would get, be able to get back on the podium. Well, that wasn't going to happen. Jake Jarman fell. That definitely took him out of the running. So over here, we have Ilya Kovtun on Pommel Horse. And like I mentioned, Pommel Horse is a really hard event to end on. But he went really, really cleanly. And all of a sudden, he bumps to the top of the standings. Fred Richard scores comes in and he is at third. So everyone at this point is waiting for Hashimoto Daiki to go and Chiba Kenta. So Hashimoto goes first. Hashimoto does a fantastic routine. It is absolutely beautiful. There is a reason that he is the Olympic high bar champion. And then it's time for Chiba Kenta to go. So at this point, right, Hashimoto Daiki's in first, Illy Kofton's in second, Fred Richard is in third. We're getting ready for the person who came into this competition ranked first to go on high bar and he falls. At this point, we know the medal podium is set and it really is a historic podium. So Hashimoto Daiki, 86.132, Ilya Kofton with an 84.998 and Fred Richard with an 84.332. So this is historic because Hashimoto Daiki is the first athlete to win back-to-back -back all around medals since his predecessor, Uchimura Kohei. Ilya Kovtun is back on the podium since 2021 and has upgraded his medal from bronze to silver. And I believe I am correct in saying that he is the only Ukrainian male athlete to have won two all-around medals. So that's really cool. And Fred Richard is the first American to be back on the podium since Jonathan Horton. And he's only one of four Americans to ever have won an all-around medal. And he is the first black American to do so. So it really is historic all the way around. And then even off the podium, there's some really cool stats. So Milad Karimi is fifth placed of Kazakhstan. He, it's the second best result in history after um, Yerba Metov finished fourth in 2003. Yuman Abedini of Italy, he got sixth place and it's the best finish for an Italian man since 1991. Just a really, really exciting and wonderful day of gymnastics. I really hope you've enjoyed this coverage of men's gymnastics and the men's all around final. I hope you take a moment to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We have a goal of making it to a thousand subscribers by the end of the world championships and we are so close. We're about at 750 subscribers right now. So please help us get that way to our goal. Also, if you would like to help support us financially, it did cost us about $1,600 to get here. And thank you so much to everyone who has donated. I think that that cost is down now to around $850. So I'll link my PayPal down below in the comments. And I would just really appreciate anything that you're able to give. Even $10 helps me cover the cost of a meal, which is really helpful and really nice. As always, if you have any questions, you can email me at neutraldeductions at gmail.com and I'll see you next time.